Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we're going to meet Jim Weber, the Chief Experience Officer for Comerica, and why this big bank is acting more like a community bank these days. His journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, some banks, as they grow larger and larger and take over other banks, they can become impersonal, but that's not the story for Comerica. Jim Weber is the Chief Experience Officer for Comerica. Jim, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Very cool. Well, before we get into Comerica, a little bit more on your background. Where would you work before? Well, I came to Comerica in 2007 from Fossil, which uh, most people know is the uh, sort of lifestyle accessory brand, mostly known for watches. Uh, Found here, founded here in Dallas. So I was the chief uh, marketing officer there prior to coming into banking and uh, came to the industry with absolutely no banking experience. They, for some reason, were looking for that and um, hopefully I've, I've, uh, I've, I've fulfilled their expectations. But yeah, prior to that, I was in advertising. So I, was a, I did everything from strategy to copywriting to you know, sure. producing co commercials, et cetera. And that, that marketing experience has really served you well in this new role. I want people to understand how old a Bank Comerica is. How old is it? Yeah, it's 174 years old. Our 175th anniversary starts, uh, st we start to celebrate at the end of this year. Wow. And uh, yeah, but Detroit based. So um, really uh, have been a mainstay of the Detroit market, started as Detroit Savings and Trust. And uh, yeah, have maintained that that legacy and heritage uh, through all the ups and downs of 175 years uh, doing business in, in the United States. And uh, we moved our headquarters here in 2007. That's That was coincident with my arriving at the company. Sure. So, um, uh, yeah, it's been a, uh, it, it, the bank does business now. It's Michigan, California, and Texas primarily. We also do business in Florida and Arizona, and we just moved into the Carolinas, opening up some commercial banking uh, capabilities there as well. Yeah, and I made the point uh, early in the show that some banks, as they grow, they just become impersonal. Um, you guys are really going above and beyond to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think it's really important, and this is maybe a little bit of my marketing background talking, but I think it's really important to go beyond words. It's very easy, um, as, a, as someone who used to write television commercials and write advertising, it's very easy to, to write an ad saying that you care, saying that, you know, um, yeah, we, you know, we're there for you. I mean, I think every bank does that, can do that, and I think they mean it, but I'm not sure as a customer that that's enough. And I've really tried to focus us um, in the, in the world of customer experience and marketing over the last several years on finding ways to add tangible value, um, really looking at everything that we have to offer and how can we get that to the customer? How can we make, a, especially a small business customer, you know, large customers get the benefit of having the suite at the Rangers game. Um, small customers rarely see that kind of benefit. So we just started to do some thinking about how and how do you really bring that real tangible value that's gonna help them in any way, shape, or form, drive their business. And some of the things that we came up with aren't going to you know, appeal to everybody, but taken together, we think it's a, a real good testament to our commitment to that segment of the market. Sure. And you can just release a 30-second uh, a commercial. Let's roll it, and then we'll talk about it. Great. Hey, everyone. Hi. Welcome. So we're very... <laughs> So, as I was saying, workspace not working? That's why we created Comerica Co-Workspaces, free office space and resources for Comerica small business customers, because sometimes you just need some quiet space. 
and that's hilarious. <laughs> and how many of us can can relate to that, right? I, well, now, yeah, in, in the post-COVID world, uh, we've all been through that experience sure. at least a dozen times. So, <laughs> okay, so tell us more about the program. Yeah. So again, in that process of trying to think about, you know, what what we can offer, what do we have? that a customer might be able to use. And then looking at sort of what has been going on in the environment, as you just said, everybody, you know, the, the shift to work at home, um, you know, really, if you look at, at, at all of the different challenges that a small business might have, uh, a lack of space or whatever, lack of ability to expand at any given time, you know, we were thinking, well, you know, and as we optimize our banking center network, we're constantly looking at, okay, well, how can we best use this space? You know, most banks are downsizing that space, but you're not going to get out of every banking center. It's still the best form of advertisement is having those, you know, those signs and those banking centers on corners in the right parts of the city, all the way, you know, from north to south, east to west. Um, but how do you use the space inside? And so we did an analysis and found that we had a fair amount of excess space and and looking at the trends and looking at the we works of the world and and where people were headed and the popularity of those programs we thought you know maybe this is a chance to add some value um, you know you're probably familiar with the fact that we work and 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 facilities like that they'll charge hundreds of dollars a month so you know our ask is become a customer and then you can have access to these conference rooms, to the to a meeting space, to an office for a few days if you need to sit there and really concentrate. Um, if the dog is barking, like the commercial <laughs> says, or you know, a lot of folks are now working from home from corporate um, locations and have that same need. So you may work for a large company, but really want to have this, uh, you know, this available to you as a third space. Uh, so you know. We love the idea. We think um, we're getting great reaction to it thus far. We just started to sort of roll out the pilot. We've got a number of locations to add to it along the way. But again, I think it speaks to this idea of, uh, we did a lot of research on this idea, three, three different studies, and uh, it tested off the charts for anything I've ever experienced. The reaction to it was just incredibly positive and really for the you know very high numbers for people saying, hey, I, I have never heard of you, but I'd consider you because of this idea. Wow, I think it's absolutely brilliant. We're gonna pull up the website and uh, scroll down the page. And as we scroll down the page, I think that's, I mean, what a great offering. Just become a customer and, and here just in Dallas-Fort Worth, you can see all the locations. Yeah, and the, the thought is, you know, this is our first this is our first market, and we'll continue to roll those out and roll out new locations as the year goes on. Um, we've got a, and it, and and it really fits a lot of different use cases, right? So as I described, there are a lot of different aspects to it. Um, you know, whether you want to have a group meeting or you want to be there by yourself, you just want to sit in a you know sort of a, a Starbucks like lounge area and and type right. on your lap. You can do that. Um, the other thing, one of the aspects to this though, is also something called community spaces, and I point that out only because um, we're doing a, a dedicated location down in South Dallas mm -hmm. that has really taken off and, and I think, uh, again, exemplifies not just our commitment to small businesses, but our commitment to sort of diverse communities. So um, we have something called Business HQ in South Dallas, and that's a version of this, but it's totally dedicated as an incubator for small businesses from the southern sector of the city. Wow. And so we're really excited about how that is also uh, working on multiple levels. Um, again, folks can come in there. They can. Uh, we have we have learning um, opportunities. We have coaching opportunities for for entrepreneurs from that part of the city. And you know the reaction to it and the response from the community has been absolutely overwhelming. I think that's amazing because the success of your customers is your success. Exactly. We're going to pull up another page from the website and we're going to talk about shredding. So this is another just wonderful benefit. Yeah, <laughs> these things are. This is a very popular one. We've we've um, we've had the we've had we we partner with Iron Mountain on this mm -hmm. um, because uh, every year for the last gosh it must be ten or twelve years I've lost track. Um, we do, we uh, conduct a, an event called Shred Day, mm -hmm. and it usually happens at, at the Iron Mountain facility up in up in the Carrollton area, and we get upwards of three thousand visitors to that event every year. It's a pent up demand to get rid of documents as people are going more digital, and you you want to you know I've got this box of old tax returns, and I I, I don't want to keep them, but I right. I got to get rid of them safely. So we thought about it and we were like, well, why not make Shred Day every day? Why can't, why don't you just provide that as a community benefit? And so again, we've opened up those kiosks in, in a number of locations. The website uh, indicates where they are. And uh, yeah, we've had, we've had folks 
almost backing trucks up. We kind of, <laughs> had to, kind of had to change the rules a little bit and kind of limit it because people are like, oh, yes, I will take advantage of that. And we're like, OK, slow down. Um, so Iron Mountain's like now backing up trailers to, you know, to these locations. So again, I, I love it being popular. We're, we're you know, again, being a test market, we're going to work out how do we administer it. But it just shows, again, if you're listening to the community and you're listening to what businesses need um, and you come up with a solution that fits that need, you know, you've, you've got a really good chance of, of you know, striking gold. Sure. We're going to bring up one more page on the website. And this one, I cannot believe. You guys have these great seats to rangers and stars. And so the average, like, small business owner can actually... Go to a Stars game? Yeah, our customers uh, come to the site. They sign up. If they're if you're a Comerica customer, you sign up. And it, it, what's interesting about Comerica, I think it's a little unusual even for a bank of our size. We bank a lot of professional sports teams. So we are the, uh, one of the uh, leading banking providers to the Dallas Stars, to the Texas Rangers. In Detroit, where you know all the major teams, uh, with the exception of of, um, of the Pistons, we have longstanding relationships. So we bank the teams and. Part of that relationship is usually involves sponsorship and involves seats. So again, we kind of did the analysis and said, what would be valuable? You know, would a small business customer, for instance, like to have the opportunity, you know, even if it's just once a year, like take, yes. take a client to the game. And so we manage the inventory in a way that allows uh, customers to do that. And so it's this whole idea of what's ours is yours. If we have a benefit and we think we can take that big bank benefit and bring it down to the community level, as you said at the beginning, that's what we're aiming to do. And again, very popular. Uh, they, they uh, Once people know they're there, they, they go quick. But our customers, um, again, are showing a lot of appreciation. And the other uh, one of the other programs I think you were going to highlight there is to the uh, sharing of ad space. Yes. We have a really great story on this. And I, I if I had remembered, I would have brought the customer's name, but we had one of the customers, a Comerica customer, featured on the Jumbotron at American Airlines Center during one of the games, late wow. in the season, Stars game. American Airlines Center saw the ad and gave their business, American Airlines Center gave their business to our customer. That's cool. Yeah, it was like, we were reading, you know, the the sort of the testimonial of it, and it was just amazing. But I'm gonna tell you, that's how it should work. That's how you kind of like dream it up in a best case scenario that right. everybody wins from that. Um, so that was, a, that was a great moment. And again, you know, just trying to look for ways to, you know, to add value. Which I think is just incredible. You're looking at all the resources that you have and instead of just giving them to your VIPs, you're giving them to everybody. It's, it's exactly, absolutely. exactly. I mean, th and that's the whole, I mean, that's what we're really trying to tap into and in talking to a lot of small businesses. And part of customer experience management is listening. Mm -hmm. It's a listening exercise of, you know, what, what are those needs? How do they evolve? Um, what, you know, what is most important? And so, you know, there are some things that, that we can do and some things we can't, but anywhere where we found that there was an intersection between something that we had and something that they felt really added value and helped them run their business, sure. um, those ideas seem to have you know really resonated. And we've already mentioned that Jim has a background in advertising. He's also a little bit of a ham, a little bit of a showman. Nah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to put these pictures up and, and, and tell us what we're I'm looking at. We're wearing the here. same jacket. Look at that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a diverse wardrobe, Jeff. So. <laughs> tell us what we're looking at. Uh, so this is an event called Expectations Day, which we hold annually. And it started, um, it started in a small room in, uh, in Comerica Bank Tower downtown. Uh, during COVID, it was literally me and one other guy rolling a cart around the uh, the, the different office spaces in Comerica Bank Tower and broadcasting to the uh, to, to the collected network. But usually, we get about five thousand colleagues who tune into this. And so last year, we decided to move it to the Majestic Theater, and the plan was to have a live audience. Well, um, that didn't work out because we had our lat one. I guess it was the last major COVID scare. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had it at the Majestic, but I was sort of standing on a stage talking to an empty audience. This year, we had the full thing. We had about 800 people wow. in the audience. And so we ran it like, a, like the whole, you know, we did the whole Jimmy Kimmel thing. We were <laughs> coming on stage. I had a stand up routine um, and they were all banking jokes, but I guess a couple of, a few of them hit okay. Um, but, it, you know, what it speaks to is, you know, I, th I think especially for folks who work at banks, there's a perception that like, yeah, they don't have any fun. They're just straight down the line. And 
you know, it's it's important to inject that personality and inject, and inject some variety and really show the love to, to everybody. So it, the whole event is a celebration of our core values. It's a celebration of who we are as a company. We have this thing called the Comerica Promise. Um, and it's that's our tagline, raise the expectations of what a bank can be. And, and the event itself is designed to do that. It's, sure. a, it's designed to get everybody excited, get them on the same page. Um, I interview, you know, the first interview is always Kirk Farmer, mm -hmm. and he kind of lays out his vision, which people are really excited to hear, and then the other business leaders do the same. And we mix in a little bit of fun because people are really looking for that. They don't want, you know, they don't want to sit in front of a PowerPoint for an hour and a half right, right. learning about the company strategy. So this is a way to deliver that message, and, and it's very, you know, I think in a very memorable way, and one that we've gotten great feedback for. Well, I admire you. I mean, it's tough to deliver a monologue, and <laughs> <laughs> especially if you yeah, hear, I was scared you hear the to crickets. Death. And <laughs> I was scared to death. Yeah, there were a couple that fell flat, but yeah, we had some we had some good gags. So okay, so uh, we're almost out of time. So final thoughts. What would you like to leave people with? Oh, you know, I think that um, I think that you were saying this earlier. It's a really competitive environment um, out there, and especially if I think about small businesses or you know any 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 uh, any banking services. There, there's a there's a lot of choices out there, and I think um, one of the things that we've always prided ourselves on, and I think a lot of the examples that I've given you today are this idea of um, what we think there's a sweet spot, mm -hmm. right? It's it's big enough to matter, small enough to care. And that's that's bringing big bank resources to the table, but acting like a community bank. Um, not many people know Comerica has been in this market for a little over 30 years. And that presence uh, began by the acquisition of a lot of smaller community banks who've kind of matched our profile and values. And so you know, we really understand the need to operate on that level, to operate on a local level. So, you know, I, I would I would just say, you know, if you're if you're thinking about banking in that regard, um, I think we bring the best of both worlds to the table. Outstanding. That's a great way to, to end this segment. We're going to leave you with the website, which is Comerica.com. The great Jim Weber. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's it for now. We'll see you next time.